<sighs> hey everybody, I'm Joshua Oro, the Mustang Prince, and welcome to Mustang Prince Oro Reports. Well folks, Father's Day is here again, which means it's time for me to blog something that involves fathers connecting with their children. But what? Hmm. Hey, remember two years ago when I blogged the first Land Before Time movie? And before that, I put the big freeze on my top 25 holiday films. Well, anyway, I just can't believe that this is one of the few franchises that managed to get 13 sequels. And I heard a 14th movie came out recently. But anyway... Today's subject is a movie that temporarily got me off the franchise for over a decade. But the question is this. Is it still good in my opinion? And how does it fit into Father's Day? Well, you'll see. Released a DVD on December 2nd, 2003. The movie is... The Land Before Time 10, The Great Long Neck Migration. Now, let's begin. A sleep story leads Littlefoot and his grandparents on a journey to a new land, where Littlefoot discovers someone who vanished before he was ever an egg. His father. And now Littlefoot must decide between two worlds. Will he leave to be with his friends in the Great Valley, or stay behind and start a new life with his father? Sorry, you'll have to find out for yourself. Yes, you heard me. I am recommending you to see this movie. Because I liked it. It was epic, nostalgic, and sometimes really emotional. But before I get ahead of myself, let's move on to Mustang Notes. Now, this movie was the first film in the series to use fully computer-generated imagery on the dinosaurs and a few of the background environments. And in my opinion, it looks out of this world, even during the scenes where Littlefoot is dreaming, and during the solar eclipse nearing the end of the movie. But, there is one part of the movie that got a little bit predictable, and that's the idea of having sharp teeth as the villains. Even if they're barely in this movie. Now, as you already know, most of these Land Before Time movies have songs in them, and in total, there are three songs in this movie. The first song is called Adventuring, where Littlefoot tells his friends about his upcoming journey with his grandparents. Next is Me and My Dad, which is a song Littlefoot sings while hanging out with his father and getting to know him. In my opinion, it's a really sweet song, and it's also the kind of song you'd listen to on Father's Day. The last song in the movie is called Bestest Friends, sung by Sarah, Ducky, and Petrie, saying that they'll always be Littlefoot's friends no matter where he goes. In my opinion, it's one of the saddest songs in the whole franchise, next to If We Hold On Together. It even gets a reprise at the end credits, performed by the talented Olivia Newton-John. Now let's move on to the characters and the voice actors who brought him to life. Our hero, Littlefoot, is voiced by Alec Medlock, who two years later voiced Kex Bradley in Dinotopia Quest for the Ruby Sunstone. Now, ever since the, the end of the first movie, Littlefoot has been raised by his grandparents, voiced by the late Kenneth Mars and Miriam Flynn. And throughout the franchise, he has grown up into a fine young long neck. In this film, however, Littlefoot is curious about the sleep stories that he and all the other long necks have been having and wondering what it means. Next we have Sarah, voiced by Andy McAfee, who's voiced her since the fifth movie, 
and also voiced Robin Starling in the Tom and Jerry movie, and Mary Lennox in the animated Secret Garden movie from 1994. She, along with Ducky, Petrie, and Spike, voiced by Aria Curzon, Jeff Bennett, and Rob Paulson, are Littlefoot's best friends ever since their first journey together. Now, Sarah is still a bit of a stubborn three-horn, but not too long after Littlefoot and his grandparents left the Great Valley, she rounds up the rest of the gang in the middle of the night and try to follow to where the Long Necks were going. In my opinion, Sarah does make a great leader. Now let's talk about the new characters in the movie, starting with Littlefoot's long-lost father, Bronn. Voiced by Kiefer Sutherland. Who's been in films like Monsters vs. Aliens and the 2014 Pompeii movie. In my opinion, Bronn's the best new character in the movie, and it's about time he showed up in the franchise. He also had a very interesting backstory. You see, before Littlefoot was ever an egg, he left to find a new place to live, and returned to find that the earthquake destroyed everything, and learned about the death of his wife. While he was searching for Littlefoot, he finds several orphan long children wandering in the wilderness, and later many other long necks joined him and formed a herd and made Braun their leader. Anyway, I love the scenes where Littlefoot spends time with Braun and gets to know him. Next we have Shorty, voiced by Brendan Michael DePaul. Shorty is one of the young long necks who Braun found in the wilderness. This kid is mostly negative. I mean, he likes to get things started, like when he tripped Littlefoot with his tail. And later, he gets jealous of Littlefoot's relation with Braun. But I like the part that later on, nearing the end, when Littlefoot clears things up with him by thinking that they could be brothers. Also, this kid is really badass when it comes to slinging rocks with his tail. Next we have Sue, voiced by Bernadette Peters. Known for being in films like Annie from 1982, The Animaniacs Christmas Movie, Wacko's Wish, Rogers and Hammerstein's Cinderella from 1997, Beauty and the Beast and Enchanted Christmas, and of course, Legends of Oz. Now, Sue is a female long neck who joins up with Littlefoot and his grandparents on their journey. What I like about her is that she's really sweet, and she saved Littlefoot from a crocodile. She's also hoping to find someone to have a relationship with. Lastly, we have Pat, an old long neck voiced by the late James Garner. Whom I remember as Lyle Roark from Atlantis the Lost Empire. This guy joins with Sarah, Ducky, Petrie, and Spike on their journey to find Littlefoot. He is shown to be a very lonely traveler. What I like about this old long neck is that he's very gentle. I also like the scene where he tells the gang about the long neck creation myth and that Sarah and the gang help him after his foot got burned by lava. I also like that at the end, Sarah invites him to come home to the Great Valley with them. Now, on to my final words. Overall, The Land Before Time 10, The Great Long Neck Migration, is an epic movie. The animation is good for a home video release, and several parts of the environment isn't that bad either, even if some parts are in CG. The characters like Littlefoot and his friends are still lovable, as well as the new characters from Braun, Shorty, Sue, and Pat. Still, the only downside to this movie, in my opinion, is that there's hardly, well, I mean, barely a villain in this movie. But this is still a, well, 
a good film to watch for the Father's Day weekend. And I highly recommend this to everybody. So my rating for this movie will be a 90% out of 100. Well, that's it for today, folks. Be sure to join me again next time. Mustang Power. Oh, and happy Father's Day, folks. It's nice to have a dad that you can be with. Ah. To share a part of each and every day. Who you can talk and joke and play and eat a tree with. Who wants to hear the things you have to say. Who will lift you up when the water's too deep. Who stay Ooh. by your side while you're falling. Nice to have a dad.